Hi there, this is Professor Monty, and we're going to talk about the bounds theorem. Now, what I've done is I've written it down, so if, in case you want to take a picture of it with your phone or whatever to refer to it, let me read through it, and then I'll show you how it works. So, the bounds theorem says, suppose that P of X is a polynomial with real coefficients and a positive lead coefficient, and synthetic division with X minus C is performed. If C is greater than zero and all terms of the bottom row are non-negative, then C is an upper bound for the roots of P of X equals zero. But if C is less than zero and the terms on the bottom row alternate in sign, then C is a lower bound for the roots of P of X equal to zero. So what I'm gonna do, let me erase that. I've, I've written one up here and we'll show some examples of how this works. So let's get all of this out of here. And let's start off trying to find some of these roots. All right, so let's test negative one. Now, I've got a video that I've done on synthetic division. So if you need to refer to that, go back and refer to that. But I'm just putting the coefficients here. We're testing negative one to see if it's a root. So I bring down the two, multiply negative one times two, I get negative two, add those down, negative 11, negative one times negative 11, that's going to be positive 11, which is an 18. Negative 1 times 18, negative 18, negative 12. So first I know it's not a root because I didn't get a remainder of 0. But I used a negative number here. And the numbers on the bottom alternate in signs. That's what it was saying. That means negative 1's a lower bound. So since I used a negative and they alternate in signs down here, negative one is a lower bound. And what does that mean? That means I can't have a root lower than negative one. So I don't have to check negative two, negative three, negative six, any numbers lower than negative one. This rule tells me any root can't be less than negative one. All right, let's try another one. Let's look at three. So let's try positive three. Let's look at a positive one. So two, negative nine, seven, six, we'll try a three. So I bring down the two, three times two is six, negative nine plus six is negative three, multiply by three, I get negative nine, which is negative two, multiply by three, I get negative six, which is zero. So we do know three is a root of this polynomial, but we also know it's not a bound. Now, since this is positive, it can only be an upper bound. We can't check it for being a lower bound. Since this is positive, if all the numbers down here are non-negative, then it's an upper bound. We see, oh, we have a couple negatives. As soon as I have one negative, this can't be an upper bound. So I know it's not an upper bound. It was a root, it was a zero, that was good. But it's not an upper bound. Anytime you get zero down in the bottom, you can use it as positive or negative to help with either of the alternating signs or positives on the bottom. You can use it either side. So I know three is not an upper bound though, because these aren't all non-negative. Let's try another one. Let's leave those numbers up there. Let's try maybe negative five. Positive five rather. So we'll bring down the two. 5 times 2 is 10, we get a 1, 5 times 1 is 5, add those up, we get a 12, wasn't a very good 5, was it? 5 times 12 is 60, we get a 66. Since I used a positive and all these numbers down here are positive, 5 is an upper bound. So we found out Negative one was lower bound. We found out three was not an upper bound. Remember, you can only check negatives to see if they're lower bounds, not upper bounds. You can only check positives to see if they're upper bounds. Three was not an upper bound, but five is. So for instance, I wouldn't check to see if six was a, was a, a zero or a root of this function. It can't be. No number larger than five can be. And we know five is not because I didn't get a remainder of zero. So that's all there is to it. It's kind of wordy and it sounds kind of crazy when you read it. So I wanted to read it to you and then translate it from math into English. So hopefully that helped. But it's not too bad. Once you get some practice at it, it goes really quick, especially as you get your synthetic division quicker and quicker. All right. So if you like the video, 
please like it, click on like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and we'll talk more later. Good luck with this. Remember, you can do this. This is doable. All right, good luck.